Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Daryl Brislein. I'm the business development manager for Emhance out of our Irish office. Um, I'd like to welcome you all here today uh, to our uh, introduction to Business Central, Microsoft's finance solution aimed solely at the uh, small medium business enterprise uh, market and um, a solution well suited to the charity sector. And uh, really, I'm just here to kind of make uh, my colleague look good. My colleague Dan Booth is going to really do all the heavy lifting and uh, essentially introduce you to Dynamics Business Central. My colleague Dan Booth, there you see his, his wonderful picture on the right hand yeah, side. Morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Um, just before I let Dan, I'll, I'll, before I unleash Dan on you, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we're looking at about 60 minutes, might close a little early. Um, everybody's placed in listen only mode just to uh, as we have quite a, a large group on the, uh, the session today uh, if you do have questions we recommend using the question panel the chances are as Dan does have a lot to cover we won't maybe cover the questions within the session but we will get back to you then uh, we'll do a follow-up after the session um, either myself or Dan or your account manager we pass it on to your account manager um, or if you want to hold the question and just ask your account manager, just make contact with your account manager through the email address that you see there on the screen. Say hello at mhands.com. Okay, that's really as much as I need to say. I'm going to hand it over to Jan Dan, who will initially take you to the agenda. Thanks, Dan. Brilliant. Thanks, Daryl. Morning, everyone. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of leads and prospects and people who are new to Business Central on the call today. So what I want to do, first of all, is talk through the reasons why you know, the common reasons when we're speaking to charities looking at a final system, why they want to move to a new ERP system. Then we'll get into what is Business Central, how it fits your team and your, your organizational requirements. We'll then go into the different types of install we do. And then by the time you get in a bit bored of PowerPoint, we'll get into the product itself, have a look at it. And how that works with the wider Microsoft stack and the sort of products that your team and, and yourselves and your team are used to using on a daily basis, which really helps with user adoption. So quite a lot to cover, but I do want to give an introduction to Business Central because a lot of people that we speak to don't realise what Business Central is and what it can be for an organisation. So to start, you know, we speak to customers, we speak to people using different systems, you know, multiple times. Day. And the reasons why charities look at changing their accounting system is you know, organizational growth, multi entity and consolidation, things like that. As you know, the, the older legacy systems were a brilliant and were brilliant at the time, requirements grow and flexibility grows as well with regards to that. So you want something and charities come to us asking, can it do this, can it do that, can it be the other? Because our needs have changed from what it was five, six years ago when we implemented one, one of the finance systems out there. Organisational growth is something that's always said. One of the ones that comes across a lot is you've got different people using different systems in your charity of which finance ends up in the middle of it and trying to make logic of different data coming in from different systems in a really unorganized way because your financial system isn't set up to bring in data from different places in different formats and that causes a real problem obviously there's an inefficiency and uh, you know whenever i'm doing this my background is accountancy i've worked in finance teams finance are always at the end of that process having to mess around and sort that out so it comes into your financial statements so the silo system, the accounting system, being able to deal with that becomes a, a requirement as well. And obviously, the more silo systems you have, the more data duplication potentially there is. You want a system that can do what you need it to do without holding information in it that it doesn't really need to be in a finance system and probably only is because of the silo systems and your legacy accounting system. Very inefficient very, very time consuming data duplication and in a world where charities are questioned on data governance and GDPR all the time, obviously the more data you have and the more it's duplicated in systems, the more volume you've got to control and be managing, which causes, you know, it's another inefficient use. Another reason why, and 
you know, this especially has come out over the past sort of two years with the COVID situation across the world. System access, um, you know, being able to access your information on any device, mobile and tablet, the world is changing. We need people who've got quick access to information. Working days aren't nine to five in every organisation. You've got people doing the finances out of hours in some smaller organisations. They need to be able to access that without costly VPN hardware requirements or anything like that. And obviously, then that then means we've got the system access, which is a point, but also the reporting limitations that some of the older systems bring. You know, you're going to need analytics at your fingertips as well. You know, mobile tablet devices. You're going to want to see your fund analysis. You're going to want to see potentially project campaign analysis, event analysis in your PL to see what's profitable and not profitable for you as a charity. So you can invest your donations and your grants and your sort of um, public body grants and things like that in the correct way where you know there's going to be most benefit and most impact from the people you're trying to help. And obviously manual processes and this all sort of comes around the outside. You know, Lots of manual processes take a lot of time and take away the focus of the people who you work with from being able to act on the data, being able to use the data. Manual issues and, and especially manual issues around commonly used products. If you have manual processes, they are just time consuming, not just for the people doing it, but for finance at the end as well. Um, People looking at a new accountancy system and a new ERP system and now looking at all these areas, it's not just a case of does it do a journal. Yes, most finance systems do, well, all finance systems do like to think does it do a journal. But this is the sort of things what we're hearing from charities as to why they are moving and looking to move from their current finance systems. And there's a number of concerns with that. Cost being a major one. You know, you have to justify cost. Um, that isn't directly impacting the people who you were in business to help. So any internal cost needs to be absolutely, you know, controlled, governed, and sure for your 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 board members and your trustees that you are going to gain benefit from this internal spend. That's cost of software, cost of implementation, implementation timescales. You know, this is in addition to people doing the day job. A couple of things on here that you know really do come up, and again, it, it's all around the sort of new governance rules and what your auditors are looking at. System complexity and data governance. That's a huge concern as customers are looking uh, for new finance systems. They want something that dull, that easy to use, easy for people to use, but also has that governance of the data, and also has, as it says in point seven there. The governance of who's got access to that system, the security element of it. Obviously, if you are using new cloud-based system, which Business Central is, you want to have that control over who's accessing what data. You want to have the full audit trail, things like that. And finally, future-proofing. As an organisation, if you are going to invest in a new finance system now, you don't want to have to be going through this process again in two or three years' time. And that future proofing of knowing that the system is there to be very, very scalable as your charity's requirements change, your organizational strategy may flex. You want to know that the system that you're going to invest in is stable and scalable enough to proof you against any future changes that can work with you and be flexible with you as your requirements change. And that's where, you know, hopefully the, part, the reason why you're on the call today. So who can help you through that decision making process and tailor a solution? Well, obviously we can, which is hopefully why you're on the, the webinar today. Microsoft technology and investment in Business Central, as you'll see shortly in a couple of the slides, is more than just an investment in a business, in a final system. It's everything around that. A business, you know, Business Central forms part, core part, you are changing your final system. So it has to drive from that. But all us with Microsoft technology and the wider Microsoft staff with Business Central at the forefront can assist you and work with you through not just your requirements today, but going forward as well. So what is Business Central? 
and um, you know, I, I could spend three hours talking about what Business Central does and trying to sort of summarise this into a five-minute couple of slides before we get into the system itself. But what is BC? It's cloud-based. So you don't need, there's no need at all for any on-premise servers, any additional hardware costs, and it's priced per user per month. So you're buying a subscription. It's a subscription-based service. It unifies with all the common Office 365 products, um, you know, Excel, and you'll see the slide next, which highlights this more. But what it all, what that does, the fact it's unified with the common products really, really does help in user adoption. There's a resistance to change um, with some people, which is natural. Um, helping, you know, uh, decision makers may choose Business Central. But the real people who make a project work is getting the people who are putting the transactional data in as comfortable with it as possible and making that as easy a process as possible. And it's very simple to put it in Business Central, but people are more comfortable in outside, you know, in, in Excel. The way it interacts with Excel, which I will demonstrate through in the next half an hour or so, just makes that user adoption for people putting the data in a lot more simple and they unified with other products such as Power BI, such as Outlook. We can see all that and just show how it brings everything together. It's accessible. So there is a dedicated mobile tablet app. So you can access this data with Office 365 security on top, a security of some level. So you're signing in, you, you potentially, if you've got two-factor authentication controls, things like that, can all be built in. So you can access Business Central from anywhere as long as you've got a suitable connection. You know, home working, agile working. I always say this, and I'm yet to find somebody who's actually do it, but you could be on a beach in Jamaica working on Business Central if you really wanted to. Now, fair play if you do. But yeah. Any location, as long as it's a suitable connection, you can access your business central data. And it's very, very scalable. So business central, as it says there, this is something that we can put into the smallest of charity, and we have done, to large, large charities turning over multi, multi millions of pounds. And what that does, and you know, we we enhance our rocket scientists. We use a standard solution that Business Central has given us and tailor it to the charity requirements and tailor it to your own specific needs. And the fact that it is scalable, as a slide later will show, not just can it flex, as I said before, as you go, but it also allows you as a customer the option. Do you make one big bang change? Do you go from potentially where you are now to your utopia position in one project? And you phase that journey. We, as a Microsoft partner, and as a, you know, we don't see ourselves as your business central provider. We see ourselves as your partner as well. You are a customer. We have an account management team. We don't have a sales team. It's an account management team. Through that, we can manage that journey. We can help you through that journey and and do the process in however you want that to be done to reach your utopia position but have the flexibility to change as your requirements may change. Just to visualise that a bit more because I think this you know shows it really really nicely. Business Central forms part and sits as part of Microsoft Dynamics 365. You may you, you will have heard you may not be using it but you will have heard of CRM and all the products around there interact seamlessly with Business Central. You know, Teams integration, you'll see that Excel integration, Outlook integration, we can show some of that. We can link SharePoint sites for document management, although Business Central does have document management in it as well. And for the charity sector, when you look at this cloud and, you know, your utopia positions, as we say, CRM, we have our NFP products on CRM that deal with all your sort of CRM bits, your donor management, your events, your cases, your grants volunteers, all that sort of stuff is there in CRM. For our Business Central solution, we've got the core finance, we do partial VAT, which is the next session uh, with my colleague Russell. We've got add-on governance to that within Business Central. And when you think we can get them talking to each other, you can have 
Business Central firmly sits in this end-to-end -end potential solution that you can have based on Microsoft products. So it is very, very, and it's, it's a lesser known part of it because I think everybody knows Microsoft does dynamic CRM, uh, customer engagement. Business Central is within that stack. It's a great, great finance system that is lesser known in organizations, but it sits there, it works for these products, and it can and it does, otherwise I wouldn't be here in front of you talking about it today. It can provide real benefit and enhancements for the charity sector, which is what we'll go through. I think it's end up, it's very scalable. So you've got different elements of Business Central, and this is all core functionality. This isn't enhanced adding, adding stuff on, this isn't third party products. This is all what you have. So you can tailor it from like the small requirements that are standard, making tax digital core functionality in the system. No bridging software, no add-on product, it's core functionality in the set system. But you can layer this and you can pick and choose which of these uh, you want. It's not a case of you've got to have all of them. Auto bank statement reconciliations, customizing your whole page, role-based security so people in the system can only see what they need to see. Next level up, we've got up to eight dimensions, and they are, you know, your fund accounting reporting. You may have directory, you may have cost center, you may do campaigns, events, uh, projects, even grant management. We do via dimensions as well. All that is there. Multi currency, fixed assets, budgets, and then you go to the sort of the more advanced sort of stuff. We've got inventory management. We've got a job and project costing module in BC intercompany consolidation so if you are multi-entity and you have a consolidation requirement you don't need to do that in excel we can create consolidation companies it does it all for you as part of the standard business central offerings that we provide and the governance again keep mentioning that it's a massive thing for charities having workflow management within the system approving journals uh, approving transactions in the system that's all there so good and it's all part of the standard we just need to configure them. we don't need to create we don't need to customize is configuring the approval workflows in the system to meet your requirements based on what your approval levels are all that governance is standard functionality within business central so it's very very wide ranging and as i say you can pick and choose which bits you want to do in different phases if you want to there's nothing that sends you up a dead end in your implementations now, I have to be, and, and sometimes when I say this, um, you know, people from Microsoft especially look at it, there's not one perfect system. If there was, everybody would be using it. That, that's, that's the answer to that. So there are areas that enhance have done which wrap around. So it's either an extension to Business Central or it's using one of the products in that cloud picture, all within the Microsoft app, to just give some additional governance specifically for the charity sector really so we have purchasing expense management that allows people to raise purchase orders approve purchase orders approve invoices expenses things like that in a dedicated mobile app without giving these people access to the core finance system so we've built an app and it integrates seamlessly all the logic of how you can post is within bc and comes into the app but it keeps your non-financial users out of Business Central. Within Business Central, a couple of extensions, we've done an EFT product, um, which allowed you to regenerate VAX files. It's got approvals, including proxy approvals in Business Central for your payment files, a very common request on our charity tenders. And it's also got additional governance around bank detail changes. So you, know, you may have a number of people, your, your award recipients, your grantees, who you need to make payments to. There is governance around the bank detail changes of them people because generally charities we speak to have a lot of payments going out to different people. So managing that vendor bank approval is something that has to be done. You need to know, you need to, if somebody's messing around, I'm not saying it happened, you should be trusting your staff where possible, but just that governance and take off for the auditors, it's a huge take. Partial VAT and partial bank exemption. For the customer, the charities around the call who use this, that can be quite a resource intensive, complex, and very much Excel based system. 
we've done an extension into Business Central. And like I said, the next session at quarter past 11, with my colleague Russell, goes into this and demonstrates this. But these transactions are actually controlled directly within Business Central. You don't need to put them out into Excel. You don't need to play around. You don't need to post the journal back in. The transactions can be dealt with in Business Central for that full audit trail and full system generated audit trail, linking directly to your uh, BAT statements. Auditors love it because they don't then have to go and see and try and track back to an Excel spreadsheet. They can see the transactions, they can see the journals related to your partial exemption rules. And you know, there's a number of different rules we can build in, um, as I'm sure Russell will show, and variable percentage rates because. A lot of customers don't know what the uh, the the reclaim rate is uh, straight away, and there's a partial and variable routine that does all that for you as well. So if you do have any partial back requirements, please do. If you haven't already, please do register for the session next. And then we've done a Power BI reporting pack. So the, when we're in Business Central, I'll show you the reporting. It's extremely functional. It's brilliant for people who have Business Central licenses. But going back to what Microsoft allows us to do, and going back to the fact that we want only finance people in BC, so your non-finance people, that could even be a budget holder. It could be just different stakeholders in your organisation. We've created a reporting pack by the Power BI, and there's a session that I'm doing on Power BI um, later on today that will go through the benefits of Power BI. For a charity, the pricing is extremely, I won't say cheap because I'm a finance person, so I very rarely say that, affordable, let's put it that way. That allows you to keep your non-finance people out of the system, but also allows a more advanced reporting and analytics, slicing and dicing, fun type reporting, drilling down to transactions in a system. And we provide that as something that's a standard reporting platform across all finance modules that you can have on day one plugged into your data to allow you to have that sort of advanced analytics instead of having to create that. So why would you choose Business Central? And I promise you I'm coming to the end of the slides now so we can get into the problem. For, you know, we understand it enhance that, as I said before, Business Central can fit a small charity or a life charity. It, it's it's multi-scalable as you've seen. So what we've done, we've gone away and thought, right, okay, what are the delivery options we can do? First one, and we, we pre-packaged some solutions. So we've got our NFP finance silver offering, which you know it's only for charities. This is a bit like your Microsoft initi uh, initiatives um, that they do for charities. We do the same here at MLS. So this is the silver package is for the smaller organization up to five main users. We have it up and running in approximately six days from install. And the prices are on a monthly subscription basis to us. There is set functionality of that. And you know, we, we ramp these up. So we have a goal where you've got a bit more functionality, like customization of the chart account. So silver organized, uh, the silver package has a charity specific chart of accounts in there which you have to take, which is more encompassing than what you would think. And people who've gone onto that package don't need to change it. It covers everything that they need. They may need to rename a couple of things, but the structure is the same. On our gold package, a little bit more. So we have up to two companies, maximum of 10 users. Um, we allow for light and density if you carry um, some elements of stock. Uh, we do some data migration. All that is there, and we have that up and running within about 13 days. The prices are a bit more because there's more functionality in it. We then have our platinum product, three companies, one console company. We have automated uh, intercompany and consolidation. We have a small customization of the chart account, light inventory again, but you've got a bit more functionality, and that takes about five days more. There's a bit more training involved, you get more modules. And they are set products. And to look more at them, please visit um, our specific website, nfp365finance.com, because there's more on that, or speak to your account manager afterwards. For our for customers that we don't think will fit into these packages, though, we have our custom build. So we will go away, we will you will often get me talking to you on a regular basis, 
talking about your overall requirements there's no real limitations on what we do other than us saying we can't do it and we've never said that to anybody on bc which is a good thing to say we build that to work exactly how you want it and the quotes there are based on requirements based on time and material based invoicing so you only pay for the work we do but that includes like uat systems uat processes we do workshops and we, you get the full hand holding through the new finance system on that so we can actually you know if you're on a budget we can offer you fixed solutions in a certain budget if you want that utopia position in an overall project and like i said it doesn't need to be done in one but if you want to say right okay you know this is our position how do we get there over a over a period of time the custom bill work so uh, when we ask charities what their budget is we're not doing it so that we can hit that budget we're doing it so that we can meet your requirements in a solution that fits you based on that price and these are the different offerings that we have and all of them are really really popular we, we you know it, it, it's something there that is for everybody and that's what business central is a scalable solution that we can work with any size of charity organization okay that's let's let's get into the product and we can we can have a look at it because there are some different areas of business central which are very very different to traditional legacy systems which i need to highlight so business central you access it via an app it's either within your office 365 or you get it directly you click on the app and this is a landing page as i said you know this is you've got your traditional finance menus at the top where you can go in and click on general journals your fixed assets we can go to cash management say you know cash flow direct debit collections all that is there it's standard but you're in a cloud based system. So, a couple of things that I want to draw your eyes to first are at the very top of here. If I click on the card, I can go to my settings. I've got all the roles. You would only have access to the roles assigned to your user, but there are a number of roles here, and every role gives a different view and lets you access different things that role based security. If you're multi company and multi entity, they're all here. You just choose a company and you can access who's got access to what company. You know, we can work in different regions if you wanted to, different languages. So you may have somebody whose English isn't their first language, but you run an English system, you can change that language. All that here. But the one thing I use a lot is this magnifying glass because this is brilliant for me. If you don't know where something is, and, you know, I, I look at where's chart accounts and I've got a thing, you know, is it in my favourites? No, is it what well, in Shopify? Where is it in Shopping Finance? Where is it chart accounts? Is it? Great. You get used to it, but you're looking for it. You to search markup like, chart of accounts. What that does is go away and search the whole database. It will tell me every page in the database which references chart accounts. It will tell me the report that references chart accounts. It will go and search Microsoft App Source, which is the third party products that people upload that plug into BC that reference chart of accounts. So, as you can see here, we, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot. You've got Russian chart of accounts, you've got Swedish VAR. A lot of it won't apply to you, but it's there. And then what we've got is documentation. And the documentation portal searches Microsoft's whole portal. So you can see videos set up, how to indent, how to create stuff around your chart of accounts. Our support team get very, very, very rarely get how do you do this questions? Because this knowledge base is absolutely brilliant. And because people are working at different times through this more agile working where people may be at home or whatever, and this is a resource at any time 24 7 is it, it's it's so handy to have it just gets people working but if i scroll down the home page a little bit more you've got drill down technology now with bc so i can have a look at outstanding supplier invoices if i want to have a, a list of everything the watch will be paid well there it is 
if I looked at, well, what's this? And you can see, you know, this is used through posted it. You get all this information up front, but I can click on a, an invoice. I don't have to go and search for the double entry, it's all here. And hopefully you can see on your screens, everything that's in blue is drilled in. So I can drill down on there, I can drill down on the account name, and I can open the record in the chat with account file. There it is. I can come out, I can, you can access anything from anywhere. It's document management. So if there was an actual physical invoice attached to this document, you'd be able to see it here. Accessibility, role-based access and things like that. From your homepage, you can get down to where you need to be. On the chat of accounts, I can have my favourite accounts on my homepage. And these are like the summary sub total accounts. If I wanted to look at total income, again, drill down from my homepage. There it is. And again, I'm just getting the same list. There's a portal for Power BI for the advanced analytics on the homepage. I will touch on reporting shortly, but Business Central within BC has some really good functional reporting. Power BI is the sort of analytics where you can slice and dice a bit more quicker, easier, whatever. The fact that there's a Power BI portal on the Business Central homepage shows that Microsoft want you to interact with Power BI. So that's there and we can have reports on and I can, I think this report is pointed somewhere else. So if I click it, oh no, that's working. So you can say, I can filter down and all the data underneath it is filtering. You don't have to have eyes like a hog. I can expand the report. And what this will do now, this is technically opening up the Power BI section in Business Central. So I don't have to go and open Power BI. I can now flip on the different pages. I can look at the income. All these there in Business Central link into accessibility, all the way through accessibility, of getting to the data that you need. But if I scroll down a bit more, we can have business performance tasks. We can have TBs, just summary TBs on your homepage. If I wanted to look at what was making up the, you know, the current period value, just expand that. I've got it against my budget straight away. And again, I can drill down on the budget number, I can drill down on this. And what you will notice through all this is, look out for this little icon. Because what this icon is, you can open that page in Excel, you can open the, and you'll see it on near enough every single page, data entry, list pages, header pages, share to teams, you can copy the link to this page. But if I just open that in Excel, it comes into here, it comes into downloads, it's going to open up something I'm going to show you very shortly. But it doesn't put it in CSV. You literally get what's on your screen in an Excel format in the table. So you're not having to then reconfigure values, you're not having to do anything else. You get everything that you see on the main screen in a nice table format without you having to reconfigure it, move it from CSV, resave it into Excel. You know, we can provide all the reporting tools that we want to. We can give you the best drill down in the world. If it's, that data is of any length, 99% of people are going to want to look at that in Excel. So the one click with Excel makes it so much easier. And that's where it is. And that means then that, you know, you can create it on all the reports, your credit control reports. People who wouldn't have normally exported to Excel, to CSV, redone it, sent it back, we play with it around getting the nice format, they can do that. It's one click integration, as I'll show you. That's the homepage, but I'm just going to go back to the chat accounts because I do think it is worth getting this to organization because this is a big change. So, your chat accounts, just expand it. I'll go down to expenses code. You will see there. Nowhere in your chart accounts have you got anywhere that says fund type, anywhere that says cost center. For customers who use other systems, you may have like a segment chart of accounts where you've got multiple segments that you cut up and split. Within Business Central, the chart of accounts is purely for your, it's almost like you're doing your financial statement and how you want it to look. So if I just look at basic salaries, it's always a good one to look at. Assign it whether it's income statement or balance sheet. You have to assign it one of the six traditional financial categories. They are non, they are non-bespoke. They are 
standard stuff that you've got to assign. But then you get this subcategory, and these are your roles, and you can have these named to whatever you want them to be named. So if I click on staff costs, you can see here that has these account categories in yeah, you know, all these accounts between 3100 and 3103 roll up into staff costs, which give this 939130 number. If I just go back, you can see here staff costs. That 939 number is here. So you can now budget where you have a staff cost overall total and a subtotal in your reporting. But again, even from the chart of accounts, if I were to see what that 25 number were, I can see what the double entry was. I can see what the journal document number was. I can, you know, everything there. If there was an attachment at the back of that journal, it'd be there as well. Accessibility. But that's just your chart of accounts. What works alongside the chart of accounts is where you get the real slicing and dicing, your fund analysis, your director analysis, all that. It's the concept of dimensions. So you can have up to eight of these headers. So you could have one of them being fund because you want to split your uh, information by fund type. So you've got department, you've got campaigns in this system. So they could be coming from your CRM systems if you need event profitability. We've got projects. We could have grant profitability where you get, um, you know, you, you allocate from a fund to a grant, the revenue's there, and then you draw down from that. So you can have grants spanning multiple years where you tr where you track the cost going out against that grant, you track the cost against a project, all through dimensions. You don't need to potentially install, um, you know, and use a job costing module if you're only tracking actuals against budgets. So you can budget against these dimensions as well. If I look at fund, you know, I've got different fund types here. I've got some funds, I've got charity funds, I've got nature funds. I've got all different types of funds under there, and there you can have unlimited funds under that. And what that means, and you know, I quite often use department when I'm looking at this, but what you can do on dimensions, you can default them against customers, against suppliers, against GL accounts, against items. So just to show how that would work, if I look at suppliers, and this is a list of suppliers, Right away, and I'll go down. I can search, but I'll go onto my employee account. So on my vendor card, we have what we call, you know, we've got a number of fields that we can use. I can see my, I understand it. All these are drilled down analytics of my supplier. But if I go down and we we look, we've got a vendor posting group here, expenses. Well, this allows us to categorise vendors, customers, instead of having to have new GL accounts for everyone. So, I, you know, this is an expense account. It's an employee account, my account. But against the supplier, or item, a GL account, I can default dimensions. So my department will never change. In this year, I've got 2022. All my transactions should go against 2022 fund. These will never change. So having this defaulted, and you can decide as an organisation which ones that you say are mandatory on every transaction, you can default them. You just assist in that data entry process. So from my supplier, if I wanted to come in here and put on a new invoice, I don't have to go out and go to purchase invoice. I can go to a new document. And what it will do if I just click on that, yeah, you can see it populates it. So if I was putting through to recruitment from my chat account card, We've all worked with people who know who were binary and know the numbers, but if you didn't, you can search on the name. If I put that as quantity one, maybe 100. If I just scroll across to where my dimensions are, because they are populated. If I try and delete that, well, then be paused because the there is default against my supplier will say you have to have them in. So just when I'm on this screen, just one thing to look at. You, know, you might think, oh, there's a lot on there. It looks horrible. Uh, why are your dimensions here? I'd love my dimensions next to my account number. Everybody's different on how they want their data to be set up. So what you can do, individually, you can come in and personalise. So you can, as a user, drag and drop. This isn't something, and you know, for, for again, user adoption, different people like different things in different ways. 
you can move fields, just drag and drop. So you can have individually, without being technically minded, you can have this set up to how you have a format you want it to be set up. And you can apply that to a role, you can have it per, per user. Very good, very quick. In fact, it's putting an invoice number now, so 10, 41, 13, 10, 23. And I'll just pause that. So within a second, I haven't had to worry about the dimensions, it defaulted, I've just had to put one of it is. Now, and that's on the account now. It's done, it's posted to the right dimensions, brilliant, in this posting period. Really quick, really simple, really good data entry. Um, now, for any of the GP customers who are on the call, I don't like highlighting this, but I probably should. The interaction with Outlook of uh, let me just go into Excel first of all because I think you know Excel journals is something I want to want to show. If I go into a general journal in finance, I can enter a lot of details if I want to. I can enter it all manually. Jobs are good. But if you have an Excel template, there's no import, export, convert it to CSV. I've got this template and these headers, once it's set up, match the headers on my journal. All I have to do is copy, paste, and that journal's in. To give an idea of speed on that, I tried to do a 3,000 line journal, took about 20 seconds to copy it. It's quick, it's instant, and again, you know, we've got people who love working in BC, they're happy with it, comfortable with it. We have people who like working in Excel. They can do this journal. If any one of these was wrong, or if any one of these fields of this entry you couldn't type into Business Central manually, the journal will not import. It'll say no. It does it by line. It's very fine by line. It's that quick. So if I'd have typed in the wrong department code there, I put F1N instead of FIN. The journal has said, no, there's something wrong, and point you to where that is wrong on your import. That quick, that clever to do. So, you know, a payroll journal used to take us a long time to do. You had to go through, you export it to CSV, you know, uh, convert it, import it in, double check it, and then post it. All you're doing is copy paste, and then from here, post. And, you know, I'll go back to it. This journal, everything you do is date stamp, time stamp. If I really wanted to, I can attach a copy of the spreadsheet for audit purposes. So you've got that full accountability all the way through. And I am going to just post that now because whilst I'm in there, it helps me keep my demo system clean for the September payroll journal. And that's there, it's done. Quickly touching on Outlook. To the GP customer on the call, please do shut your, your ears. But I might have, you know, I can come into here. I've got customers. A customer may have emailed me saying, well, I need a copy of a, an invoice. So I could go to that customer account. I can click on the balance. I can see the invoices that are outstanding. Quite old. I can open the invoice. And from here, I can send by email. I just click on print and send an email. It will default to the email address on the customer card, but I can overchange that. I can type a message. I don't have to attach it, it's done it already. And I can send that email. Now what that does in the system, that I sent the email to the supplier of not to open Outlook, I will have, yeah, there you go, the invoice has come through. There it is. It also saved it on my homepage in my sent emails last 30 days. There it is, date stamp, timestamp, who sent it. So if you're an administrator, you know what's been sent from the system because you've got an overall view of everybody. But it's not just saved it in BC. It's also saved it, if I go to my sent items, in my outlook, I sent it there as well. Saved it in my sent items as well for that accessibility. 
and it works the opposite way around. So in reality, you will have had an email from potentially one of your customers, if you're doing sales invoicing, or a supplier even, saying you've not paid. That This outlook will go, and there's a business central adding to your contact insight. So what that does is from your outlook, and I can come out, well, I'll keep him busy, but you don't need to be in business central. It will go and search business central database to say, right, that email address is that attached to a customer or supplier. If it finds something, you will be able to have all the analytics for that customer or that supplier. It's a mini business central. You'll be able to drill down. And yeah, all right, it's a very small box, but you can actually open a pop-out window. It's a mini, it's a, um, like a portal to be, say, it's a mini business central. But now I can get to that customer, I can see it, and from here, I can email a copy of that, whatever. I can email the supplier back, I can email a copy of the invoice to the customer, I can email a statement to the customer. All around accessibility, that interaction, how it works with Excel, how it works with Outlook. And that is shown as well through the reporting. So I go back to my nice little global search. If I didn't know, if I type in trial balance, I've got 13 reports that reference trial balance, reports and analysis. Trial balance against both due detail. These are all standard reports that are just linked to the chart account structure. I can click on trial balance. I can send this if I wanted to. I can put my filters in. I've got date filter. I can do a trial balance by my bun type filters. I've got all this that I need. To, that is very, very simple to do. I can preview it where it just previews it to screen. Or I can send it to Excel data and layout. So accounts payable, accounts receivable comes out. I've also got where I can just send out the whole data, just an output. Very quick, very simple. So if I just, you know, I'm sorry, I clicked on, clicked on the wrong thing. Just to let you see what that looks like, I'm going to the TV, preview it. Every report created in the system, date stamp, user stamp. I've got on here your net change balances for the setup of the go. Now that can be in Excel, it can be in PDF. We've got account schedules. Now, sometimes I can't justify Microsoft's logic, but if I go to account schedules, I'll go into there. These are your reports, really. And I can look at, I've got month to date versus year to date. If I just open this, you can see here, current period, current period budget, difference, year to date, year to date, all these are drilled out. But if I wanted to do that by fund type is equal to environmental unrestricted, the numbers change. You can see there's nothing in the current period. I've got some there. If I change that to um, 2022, there's probably nothing in that. But no budget to it, only a small budget. And I've got date filters. So if I make that now, coming across because I'm using a, a, a really bad example but you can see that really quick really simple to do and if I just take the fun tap off they go straight everything is drilled out but that's for a user of PC we've got Excel reporting as well I can click on Excel reports and I can open a trial balance now, the Excel reports, put it into Excel, but they do a little bit more. If I just open one that I did yesterday, what this does, it doesn't just open an Excel spreadsheet. Because you're at this 365 and you've got all that nice security, it actually opens up this nice window here. And this creates a data connector, which will go away and pull back the data. So now you can go and post a load of journals. You can keep this once you've downloaded it once, keep it somewhere. Go and post a load of journals. I don't have to redo this again. I can click on refresh and it will go away and pull back that data into the system. Again, a really powerful tool, bearing in mind that you've got on here, we've got AR, AP, TVs, income statement, cash flow statement report. 
especially on the R and AP, that's a really powerful tool to give people. So easy to do. And then just because I do like showing Power BI, and you know, there is a session on this later, but the structure of the reports, what we get, the advanced analytics are anything like this. So if I was looking at what chart accounts, this is an income statement. I've got my different fund types here, but if I just drill down, so if I'm looking at expenses, I've got my subcategories uh, sub that we that are bespoke to you. So if I drill down on staff costs, I will refresh for the session after I will show you quick the refreshes on staff costs. But I can drill down. If I wanted to see what made up that 33 grand, I can right click, show data points table, and that will show me all the journals with all the dimensions that are there. And you can export to Excel. But what this allows you to do is sorry, if sorry, I want to look at this. Dan just says eight minutes ago, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, just very quickly, what I can do, if I want to filter this by fun type, these numbers are changing. I can filter it by fun type, by department, on income statement. And this is a structure. I can do a P&L by events, by department, by campaign, by fun type. Your fund accounting is there. The reporting, the structure of it is there. So just to wrap up, Business Central is all-encompassing. It can do a lot of things. It can do a small amount of things. It can do a lot of things. It can grow with you. And just working on this up, we understand the challenges. We work with charities. We uh, focus on the not-for-profit sector. We understand the, the, the requirements and the challenges that charities have around finance and financial transactions. We don't need to oversell it, as I keep saying. We can the scalability allows us to suit your requirements and push that going forward as well to know that you're not going down a rabbit hole and you're not investing in something that you may have to rethink in three years you've seen how easy it is to play with excel it's straight in there one of the biggest things that we get automatic your package subscription automatically rolled out upgrades so you were always on the latest version. You don't need to pay for upgrades. That's part of your subscription. Any legislative changes, any enhancements, and there's a lot of enhancements. A lot of them may not even affect you, maybe on other modules, but you are always on either the latest or the next to latest update, depending on when you come on board on Business Central. And you know, the cherry on the top is the reporting you can get out of it, fund accounting in seconds, which we'll talk about in Power BI session. Um, it's all there, defaulting. It's an investment, as I said before, not just in BC. It's an investment in Microsoft and all the benefits that that brings as you look at your organization into future potential enhancements with Microsoft as well, such as CRM and things like that. Okay, that, and that's it. So, yeah, over to you, Daryl, if there's any questions. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Dan, there is, there's one. It's a bit of a two-parter. I think the first part's okay. rather straightforward. Um, the second part might have to come back, but we'll see uh, in from Daniel. So can you, going back to your journals and DocAttach, well, it was called DocAttach and GP, can you attach yeah. any any file type to the journal? So, yes, you can, yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah. pretty much we're, all we've doc got types. We've got people with Power BI reports attached to it and all sorts. Yeah. All right, yeah. So a straightforward answer to that one. Second one, though, um, how does it work with second stage approval. Now I'm assuming that means how does the doc attach or the document attach work with se second stage approval? So I'm assuming the document gets pushed along. Yeah, so what, what would happen through the system? And there's different ways we can uh, sort of incorporate how you want approvals to work and how anybody you want them to work. Because you have got for the sort of more advanced approval processes, we've got Power Automate which we can use and works with BC, but the standard workflows in the system can have multiple level approvals. Approvers would need to be a Teams member license, which is a license for business central approvers as a minimum, they can be full user as well. But you can have multiple level approvals within business right. central as well. So but depending as, on as... what the specific requirement is, will depend on what approach we take. Okay, so so the question might be then, as the approval, as the 
the, the journal or the document or the purchase order, the requisition, the invoice, as it gets moved along, the approval yeah. chain, there's a document that's been attached to the to the journal, so say, say the invoice, is that getting, that's visible to the other people in the approval chain yeah, that, as well, that's correct? visible on the transaction or anybody who has access to that transaction. Cool. All right, well, look, we've got another few minutes, so, and a couple more questions have just popped in. So, um, again, let's just see, can we deal, deal with them here? Yeah. Um, from from Reshmi, so on the account schedule, can you do filters with multiple cost centers? So on yes, the account yeah. schedule, okay, yeah. so straightforward, yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, you can do. There is, um, uh, the, depending on whether they're in a run or whether they're on uh, um, multiple sections, uh, if it's a run of them in the setup, that's a way of doing it. If you're doing it on multiple ones, we have to put uh, a character in between. But yes, you can do that. And he's he's putting a follow up here on side by side. Does that make sense? On side by side in relation to what you just answered. Uh, yes, it should be able to be done. Yeah, I mean we need to have a look at it. But we're, we've done account schedules with full type or a dimension at the top with the column headers so you should be able to filter that down in the same way um we need to have a double check of it but there's nothing right. that so we might, i might believe that that. yeah Rashmi, we might come back to that one so uh look a couple in from kenny i'd like to touch on um i'm going to do your second one first kenny if you don't mind does business central use periods i one two three to thirteen so on and so forth that's a that's a yes uh, it, it, does, it doesn't have a period 13 though so it, it uses accounting periods but there isn't a period 13. So no adjustment period. How would you do adjustments? No. Uh, because of the way that the system works, you can control who can post. So you can even access historical postings to a user level. So you may have one person posting the adjustments into the final period once the audit has been done. Um, and that can be controlled by a user or a role-based security. But there isn't, there isn't a period. Okay, so adjustments in period 12, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to do the second one from Kenny might again let's just see how to extract the detailed trial balance by period so say from april 21 to may to march 22 so across can you do a trial balance across fiscal years yeah basically? that'd be a custom report that we'd have to create but you will be able to export that afterwards yeah okay well they're rolling in now uh dan and you're on a roll so let's just do the last one well, uh, from adam so just like journals can you upload multiple uh, SLPL, sales ledger, purchase ledger, invoices in one upload. So can you do a bulk import? Yeah, that would require some power automate work to be able to do that. Right. Um, so so that that, be a... you are able to do it, but that would require an element of uh, development for us to be able to do that. Right. So it's not a template that you cut and paste no. for multiple. You no. do so for single journal, you can use a template cut and paste, yeah. but for multiple journals, you just do an import routine of some sort. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or a config package, which is standard functionality in BC, but again, that needs to be set up. Special. Okay. A uh, little blast of questions there. All right, everybody, we're at uh, 10.59, so I, look, I will try to wrap this up. Uh, we will wrap this up. Um, just, it is of course a, a full day for us in terms of our uh, customer day. Um, our next session then will be at 11.15, 15, 15 minutes where we're dealing with partial VAT. So obviously uh, a key component to the charity sector in the UK uh, marketplace. Uh, 11.15 to 12 o'clock, please join us again for that. For this session, any additional questions you might have, again, please reach out to your uh, account manager and look, we'll help you through the account manager. Thank you all for attending this session this morning. Thank you.